Okay, today we're going to be talking about testing a few ignition coils with multimeters to see if they're any good. Uh, it's a pretty simple, straightforward test that can tell you straight away if your old engine's ignition coil is good or not. I mean, having a spark is one thing. You can have a fairly decent spark with a knackered coil, but it just won't last very long. So it's not a definite test. You can't just say, yep, I got a spark it's a good coil because it's uh, it's really not the case actually one of these two coils is dead and the dead coil was actually given given a spark so but it's still a dead coil and it did completely die after a few minutes of running so yeah we're just gonna talk about these two ignition coils how to test them and then after we've done that we'll go through some HT leads and various different things um, spark plug cap stop switches, HT splicers, joiners, all sorts of things, uh, even some spark plugs as well. But yeah, let's, uh, let's test these two coils. I've uh, got two types of meter here. One is a digital one, fairly new. It's actually probably about a year, year and a bit old now. And this old analog meter, which is a good few years old now. But both work perfectly fine. Both give the exact same reading. So it's not a problem. Right, well these old ignition coils have a secondary winding and a primary winding, you need to test both of them really, but the primary windings are usually okay, they usually don't fail, there's not many turns in the primary one I suppose, uh, the secondary one has quite a few turns, and uh, a lot more likely to be the one that's failed. But anyway, we'll we start with the digital meter, which will probably be the clearer one to read on the camera. So it's fairly easy, you just turn your meter on to the ohms range which is here on this particular meter and you're looking for the 20k mark and uh, now you're ready to test the coil and it's pretty easy you just take the red lead and put it on to where your HT lead connects, in this case it's here on this old coil. Uh, it's usually the same on most coils. This one just has an eyelet here and that would be where your HT lead joins. Uh, you can also do this test with the coil still in the engine from the HT lead. Uh, it's just the same same way. So you collect the red lead to the HT lead output which is there on this coil and then the black lead to a ground and you can see there on this meter it's not giving a reading at all it stays at one and that means that the secondary winding on this coil is open circuit if you get no reading at all it's open circuit so yeah right test the primary winding is pretty straightforward as well we just uh, need to change our range here on the ohms to 200 ohms because there's a lot less windings and a lot less resistance. Try and get the decent connection we can. We can see there we're reading 0.1.2. So 1.2 ohms on this primary winding. So the primary winding is actually good on this coil, but the secondary has failed, so it won't produce a spark. So again with the secondary winding, you just need to find out which wires are your secondary winding. Just have a little fiddle around. You won't do any harm to your meter or the coil, putting it in different places to try and get a reading either. So yeah, that's that's our primary there. And it's actually giving a fairly fairly decent reading. But the secondary is open circuit. So that will not spark, that is a dead coil. Uh, there's another one. Let's just uh, go ahead and get this one ready. Okay, so we're going to test this Briggs & Stratton coil now. This is an old 50s, 60s Briggs & Stratton coil. So again, 20k on the ohms range here. And take our red lead to where the HT lead connects, which is there on this coil. And you can see we're getting a good reading there. That's 5,800 ohms, and that's a perfectly good coil. Uh, run an engine just fine. So just test the primary windings again. 
which is a wee bit fiddly. And there we go, we got about about 0.7 there. So the primary windings are okay as well. So that bag does spark. So that's a decent that's a decent coil. Okay, so now we have our old analog meter. Now these are a little more trickier to use, but they'll give you exactly the same readings if you use them properly. So we've got on our ohms range here as well. This one gives the most accurate reading on RX1K. Now I don't know if they're all the same, but that's how this one is. And uh, before you start testing anything, you need to touch the two these together. You see there, this is deflected all the way across, and you have an ohms adjustment here, which you need to use to get the needle as close to naught as you can to give the most accurate reading. So there you go, we're on naught now. Just try that again. Yep, we should be fine. So again, you just put the red lead to where your HT lead connects. And there you go, that's giving the exact same reading. A little more finicky, but yep, there we go. Just under 6,000 ohms. So exactly the same reading as the digital meter was giving us. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Okay, we've gone to RX1 on this meter now. We're going to use that. Yeah, there's no real way of zero in that. Hmm. Who really knows? Let's zero it on there again. And let's flick it over. Alright, that's that's what we're gonna to use to measure the lower resistance of the primary winding. Again we can see we've got a nice nice read in there. So this is definitely a good coil. And you'll get exactly the same reading that the digital meter gave us with this dead coil as well. Just the only difference being that this meter won't move at all on this dead coil. The needle doesn't move at all. So yeah, there you go. It's pretty straightforward to test an ignition coil with a multimeter. Uh, I'm not sure if you could use the same test on modern coils. I've got nothing really with a modern coil in it. All my engines are pretty old and have the points in condenser and these older coils. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You should be fine using that method and you should be able to test your coils. Okay, so we tested some ignition coils and uh, established which ones are dead and which ones have still got some life in them. But actually, um, the old ignition coils won't be your only problem with these older engines. Uh, you also got to look at HT leads as well. If you, especially if you're measuring the resistance on a coil from the HT lead, so it's still connected to the engine, and you're getting no resistance, it might not be the coil. It could be the HT lead. And I'll show you that now. This is this was a bit of HT lead that came off of. A, an old Briggs and Stratton WNB and uh, this actually led me to believe that this coil that we've just tested was dead but really it was this bit of braided HT lead here so we can test that with the multimeter 20k again and you're not looking for resistance here you're just looking for that to say 0, 0, 0 or 0, 0, 1 but you can actually see it does nothing, the meter doesn't move at all and that's because there is a break somewhere you see, that's what we're looking for, there's actually that's what you're looking for, but through the HD lead we're getting nothing, so there's a break somewhere and it's probably to do with this bolt that somebody has put in the bottom of the HD lead there, that's probably the problem but yeah, that bit of HD lead is for the bin so this is a good bit of new copper core HT lead and you should see the meter move on this one yeah there you go 
So that's a good length of HT lead with no resistance either. So that's perfectly okay for these old air engines like this Suffolk in the background. This is a, a length of old silicon HT lead and these really break down. These are nasty, nasty leads. I hate silicon leads. And uh, most silicon leads give resistance as well. They probably, <laughs> God knows. The old silicon HT lead really is nasty, nasty stuff. So I try to avoid using, well I do avoid using that as much as possible really, purely because it can give resistance. Let's try it with this bit. It's just another bit of, oh yeah there you go look. You see on the meter there, this bit of silicon HT lead is giving the close enough to the exact amount of resistance the secondary winding was giving and that good ignition coil. So if you see a high reading, if I had this length of HT lead connected to this ignition coil, we would have had a reading of about 10,000 ohms, and that's unusually high. And uh, that's because you got a bit of high resistance HT lead, and this is silicon lead, real nasty stuff. And um, I've actually been told that having this HT lead with resistance can damage the coils as well. So that is straight in the bin. That's They use that more on cars than anything else and I would assume it's probably perfectly fine for that but it's not too good apparently for these older engines with these old ignition coils. Uh, another thing you're going to get is people doing bodges on engines you know keep them going and that's exactly what this is. This was on a an old Suffolk engine and it's just a bit of heavy gauge wire that somebody had used as a HT lead so you're going to want to remove bodges like that as well but yeah it's not just ignition coils that can cause problems and leave you not having a spark you can really uh, get snookered with other things as well um, spark plug caps as well that's another big problem with these older engines. You get new caps now, and some of them, some of them just aren't very good. Um, I remember having a couple of brand new ones that failed pretty early on. This is another thing as well. You'll see it. Probably won't see it because I focus on this camera. But this actually has marked on it 15,000 ohms. So that's a really high resistance HT cap. And that, if we had that on that ignition coil it would give us a reading of 20,000 ohms and that's uh, that's a really high reading so that cap I would not use on one of these engines another thing you find as well is these HT lead splicers these joiners this was on that same Suffolk engine as well and uh, this um, made the reading come out at 16,000 ohms so yeah you want to be careful with what you use. If you're joining HT lead, really don't bother. Just uh, take the engine apart and fit a new length of new copper core HT lead. It's really not worth using those splicers. And if you are going to use one, make sure you get one that has it marked on it. No resistance or low, very low resistance. You know, 0 0.05 or something would probably be fine. But something that gives you 10,000 plus ohms onto your reading isn't going to be very good. And obviously if you get if you're testing one of these, you can test these in the same way, just having it on the twenty K mark and putting each one of your leads at each end. If you get a reading if you get no reading at all, then it's the cap, you know. You gotta replace the cap. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, well there you go. Hopefully after this video some people will be able to go away and finally test their ignition coils to see if they're any good. And also their HD caps and HD leads can be tested using a multimeter as well. Thanks for watching.